Hello, welcome to Science Chomp. Today we're going to be looking at Atwood Machines Part 1. Now an Atwood machine is a, basically a pulley system, a frictionless pulley, and you've got two masses on either end. There's various configurations, so watch out for Part 2 and Part 3, where I'll go over the other different types. Now, despite looking at the complicated looking equations, the only equation we really need to be aware of is Newton's second law, that's F equals MA, and with this we can basically work out the whole thing. Uh, typically in this situation you want to be able to work out the acceleration and the tension in the spring, in the string, sorry. So when we've got this situation we need to first of all identify our forces. So we've got one force going down here and another force going down here and let's call this mass one or m1 and this force is going to be the weight and weight is m times g so we can write m1g over here and this is mass 2 and uh, the the force down here is the weight and you work out weight mass times gravity so you can write here m2g like that there's of course also a tension in the string uh, going uh, the other way so we'll work out how to um, do the acceleration first and then the tension you have to do it that way around okay so first of all um, we need to redraw this situation in a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine that this is one massive block and I'm going to take these two into account. So this massive block would be the 2 kg plus the 6 kg and over here you're going to have M2g and M2g is going to be uh, 6 times 9.8 or if you want to make it simple 6 times 10 and that's 60 newtons over here and on the other end you've got 2 which is the mass times g which is 9.8 or 10 so let's make it easy let's call it 10 2 times 10 is 20 newtons now it's a simple net force question right and that net force question is basically find out the acceleration which is F equals MA so again we simplify this so then 2 plus 6 is 8 kg and uh, you take the big one and you subtract the smaller one so in this case we've got 60 minus 20 which is um, 40 newtons and then to work out your acceleration acceleration is net force divided by mass so we write that over here, A equals F net divided by M. F net is 40 divided by the mass, which is 8. 40 divided by 8, 5 meters per second squared. That's the first bit, that's dead easy. Okay, so that's how you work out the acceleration. The second bit is about the tension. Now, we can use uh, another bit of paper, this one. Now you can see that some of the pens already gone through. And we can write on here that A is 5 meters per second squared. Now, to work out the tension in the string, we just need to take one of these masses and we've got to figure out um, basically the tension which goes in that direction or that direction. I usually take the bigger one. So let's figure this out. So we have now 6 kg. We've got a uh, M2g, which we said was 60 newtons. You've got a, an acceleration going that way, and that acceleration is 5 meters per second squared. And we've got an unknown tension over here. So what we've got to do is we've got to use this equation again. F net is mass times acceleration. F net equals mass times acceleration. The mass is 6, the acceleration is 5. 6 times 5 is 30. And to work out F net, now because it's accelerating in that direction, that 60 is bigger than that T. So you've got to write 60 minus T is equal to 6 times 5. And uh, obviously 6 times 5 is 30, so 60 minus t 
it's 30. Now, if you take this t, put it on the other side, it becomes a plus, and that 30, take it to the other side, it becomes a minus. So you end up with uh, 60 minus 30 is equal to t. So the tension is 30 newtons. It's as simple as that. So that's how you do it. Now, there's a couple of um, fail-safes that you should know. So if I take it back to the acceleration, this acceleration is always going to be less than 9.8 meters per second squared. And it is, it's 5. So you know that you've done that correctly. Secondly, if you look at uh, this um, 30 newtons, this tension, it's going to be smaller than this force and it's going to be bigger than that force. So it's going to fall in between. Okay, so that's outward machines part one. And I'll go over a different situation in part two. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Yeah.